Hello there. Welcome to the channel. Today I'm going to be having a look at this HG Iron Blooded Orphans Gundam kit of Gundam Bale. Now, I never finished watching Iron Blooded Orphans. Um, I started it a long, long time ago, whenever it came out. And I sort of try it off, as I tend to do. I get distracted quite easily. So it's Gundam, basically, is what I'm trying to say. It's not familiar to me. Um, but I thought it looked really cool, and I wanted to build something, so I picked it up. Even though I've got a massive backlog, I wanted to try um, a new video edit in my new bit and see how we uh, see how I get on, basically. So uh, bear with me. Um, so if it's a bit shit, apologies. So I won't bore you with a tour of the box. It's uh, just a quick, quick look inside, really. Um, as you can see, the artwork on the front just makes this gun down the awesome. Yeah, so we've got two bags of sprues. Uh, you can see in there, it's got a little, little set of stickers. And um, we have our instructions. So looking at the instructions, pretty straightforward, aren't they? Standard issue instructions, they fold out, black and white, until you get to the back cover, where they must just print it all in one go at this point, don't they? Because it's really weird that all of a sudden, your, your weapons instructions are all in colour, looking really nice. But anyway, got some nice promo images of him all built up and looking awesome. I keep saying awesome. I think this Gundam does look awesome. So let's get into it anyway. This kit begins with the body. And I just wanted to make a quick mention here that it mostly went together fine. Um, I struggled a little bit with it because these two pieces here, so where you clip these together they sort of have a circular bit which goes round in the center and initially I think I missed one of the pegs that pushed it together so when I finally got to the end it was all loosey-goosey so I had to then sort of take it all apart again and uh, just retry again um, but that was all on me um, I just I didn't snap it together correctly but other than that it was fine just these little stickers to add on to it um, they went on fine as well uh, I couldn't find my tweezers so I'm just using a knife but it was fine. So this is the bit I'm talking about. Just a little. That was a little loose. Um, at the time, I thought, oh, maybe it's just it'll tighten up when I put it all together. So I waited till the end, and I find out I was wrong. And the other thing, just to be wary of, it's noted in the instructions. But there's so this little bit of sprue I'm about to cut off here. This little bit. It says watch out because you don't want to cut off the bit that is actually needed to be kept. This little nubbin there, as you can see. So don't, don't cut that off. Next part was the head. The head was pretty straightforward. Um, what I quite like about this head, though, was the fact that it's V-fin. Um, it was not flimsy like some of the other kits that you sort of tend to get. There's one solid piece of plastic that's then sort of reinforced. It's a good old chunky bit. Uh, and then you've got a couple of pieces that keep it in place. And it felt pretty secure, which I quite liked. And uh, what I did find weird was the fact that the, the stickers for the eyes are not one whole piece like I'm used to. In this kit, as you just saw, they're, they're separate for each eye. So you have to uh, take your time and get a sticker on each eye, not just one long sticker across the way. Uh, I'm not sure if this is how all Iron Blooded Orphan kits are, but I'm sure I'll find out at some point. Anyway, also, I wasn't much fan of these bits. They're these stickers going on the top of the V-fin. Um, I always struggle when it comes to these types of stickers, like the wraparound stickers. Um, I did get them wrapped round, but I probably always, I always seem to do them wrong. Um, they don't look too bad, you can see, but I think they could be better, really. Now I messed up on the shoulder piece, so the stick is meant to go on the inside and then you put the white piece over this. I did it the wrong way around because I misread it, so I put the sticker on the outside. So then I had to take it all apart again and redo it. So this is what it should look like. I got it over in the end, but before, the sticker was sat on the outside and it looked weird. The arms were the next part, and the only thing I found weird about this was, so we've got this sort of moulded... Um, like cable part just on the edge here and uh, once you put the armor over it well you don't see it so I'm guessing it's probably used in other kits and you probably do see it that's probably why but for this one it just seemed weird that they'd mold all of that and then you just cover it all up I mean you see that bit that still sticks out but that bit once you put this over it you know gone not even through that crack there yeah just gone but that was it, it went together fine other than that after getting all the pieces built up, well, the body pieces anyway, before we moved on to the weapons, I thought I'd just put them all together just to make sure I've done everything wrong. And would you believe it? I've missed a part. 
how the hell I did this, I just will never understand. So I had three pieces left over, and again, I was like, well, how have I got this? So I had to go trailing all the way back through the instructions to find the pieces that matched what I had. I did find out they were right at the beginning, literally in like the second line of the build, and I've missed them. So I had to go back, take everything apart, and just add these two bits in. So they just go onto the side of the uh, torso here, over the arms, just like that. The swords are pretty good, they're nice and easy, they literally are just a two piece uh, that just snap together basically. You've got your hilt, you got your blade, and you literally just go bada bing, bada boom. And then just to get them into the holster, they just slide in, there's a little groove for the centerpiece of the uh, sword to slide into, and uh, when I get it right, uh, let me just try that again. So I say let's see if it's easy, and there you go, slides in, there we are, just snaps right in. Simple as, and yep, there we go. Then the sword holster, I guess it's called, cool. is that what it is? Yep, uh, literally just one peg plugs into the back, like so, and there you go. There you go, so you got a sword holster. And again, same with the backpack, it literally just has two peg holes, and you just plug it in, like that. And like always, if any of you are following along, um, I missed something else. Uh, so I had a sticker left over and couldn't for the life of me work out where it was. I, was, I went back through all of the thing till I found it and realized it was meant to go on to his shoulder pad. And we got there in the end. Uh, here he is. So this is straight out of the box. No panel lining or anything like that. This is just how he comes. And without me missing all the parts, it was a great build, to be honest. Uh, I did enjoy it. It came apart fairly easily from where I did go wrong and sort it all out. And uh, I'm pleasantly surprised. I like this model kit. Um, we'll have a quick look at it in more detail in a second. But I have to say, I love the, the colours at the moment. Even without the panel lining, I'm quite a big fan of the white and blue. Like the majority being the white, the little blue accents here and there. Uh, I think it just it breaks it up quite nicely and then you've got the gold sword and the tiniest bit of yellow that just sort of uh, adds a little bit more to it doesn't it um, so yeah let's have a look at what it can do right let's just check out how tall he stands so Christian Gundam Bale is about six inches but that's to the top of his backpack so he's probably about what's just five and a quarter five nearly five and a half to his head um but yeah with the backpack and those little bits sticking up he's probably about six inches now with a quick size comparison so to gundam aerial and the rg zaku he stands above both um well above the zaku and just a little bit taller than aerial uh, just head to head wise and ignoring that backpack part he is yeah he's just a little bit taller but guess what He's taller than the SDs. So we've got SD Gundam RX-70A and we've got SD Burning Gundam. Uh, just as a quick size comparison because I have SDs. I like SDs. Um, just thought I'd chuck it in there. Obviously he's going to be taller. And look, he is. Lastly, I thought I'd just chuck in a uh, MG. So the only one I could really get to was my really dusty Strike Noir. I just thought I'd put him next to it so you can see a size comparison between the HG and the MG. I wish I could get to more of my MGs without tearing down my display. One day, I'll get there. Let's have a quick look at how this Gundam moves then. So starting with the neck and the head, it's got a really good movement. It's, it doesn't, it, it moves really well. It's like, I want to say loose, but it's not loose, if you know what I mean. Like, there's full range of motion. I think the way it's designed gives it that real good uh, ability to move. Uh, one problem I did have though, so I mentioned it earlier when I put these stickers on, either I've done it wrong and they've come off or they're just a bit crap, but as you can see that one's starting to peel away from, well, basically from me messing around with it to be honest. Uh, I'm sure if I wasn't doing all of this it might have stayed on, but I don't know, I don't know if it's me, I don't know if it's the stickers themselves, I don't know what's going on there, but that's the only issue I've had so far with the head. I just wanted to jump down quickly to the feet because when I put these together, this whole gap here, it weirded me out. I thought I'd done it wrong because it was such a big gap. I was like, that can't be right. 
Uh, I had a quick look at the box and everything, and the gap did seem smaller, but there is there is no other way to do it, so this is right. But it gives you a really good range of motion, like the toes, because they just sort of plug in, you can actually uh, point and bend them. It makes posing really easy for this and stable. Anyway, moving on to the legs whilst we're here. So your knees, you know, you've got full range of motion in the knees. They bend really well and it does come apart. But uh, yeah, we'll just put that there for now because, you know, you know what it's like posing a Gundam. Things are going to pull apart. But anyway, just to clarify, the legs, they bend really well. You get full good motion out of them. Let's say you can point your toes. You can get a really good sort of in movement feeling from these legs. Uh, I think the joints are done really well on this. The butt flap doesn't move though. So if you want the legs to go backwards, you can't but your side flaps uh, move all around. Yeah, those butt flaps are pretty secure. So once you've got your swords on there and everything, your legs aren't going backwards, but you've got a full range of motion movement at the front here. Apologies for my panel line in. I am terrible at that. Uh, it's something I want to work on as well. I keep apologizing for everything, don't I? But with reason. Um, anyway, let's snap him back together and, oh, oh, there we go again. Right, edit, cut into the waist then so now we've got the waist attached there's not much forwards and backwards movement it is oh there goes the head again um there's yeah you know is side to side it's just one ball joint um ball peg uh what am i trying to say you know what i'm trying to say that bit it goes round you know quite nicely um but i think the thin the thin bit of frame there you know it i think aesthetically it looks really cool i really like the the sort of look of this kit um, and I have a feeling it translates across a lot of the Iron Blooded Orphan stuff. But like all Gundams, like I say, just the way these, especially like sort of the HGs and all these plugs and everything, these little ball joints, they do come off quite easily if you move them too far out of their comfort zone. So that waist isn't going too far. So as you saw, you know, it will pop out at any point if you try and overdo it, but it easily goes back in. The shoulder's the same, but it's got a really good range of motion. You've got this little flap here that lifts up just to give you a bit more motion with the arms. If you want to put them out, we'll look into some poses in a second, and I'll show you what I mean. And for the backpack, so these little wings, they just sort of raise up and out. Uh, but they can pivot so you can spin them around on the peg that they're attached to so you can put them all the way out facing backwards from him you can put them up to the side uh, I thought this little bit on the top moved but it doesn't really have much movement I think it's just uh, if you put the wings all the way up it sort of uh, sits in it so it looks like one complete thing uh, you've got these little uh, exhaust bits I don't know without actually seeing the anime knowing what this Gundam does I'm a bit stumped as to what some of this might actually be but if I had to guess it's like the way they pop out I'm guessing it can uh, I don't know is it some sort of exhaust thing I could be right actually no I'm not going to guess because I might sound even worse if I guess and I get it really wrong so anyway it just plugs on like that and like I say look you can oh focus and you can poke them all the way out like that now it's sword holster, it has a bit of flexibility too. So I think the idea being is you can kind of pull it out and rotate it round so he can actually hold them at his side. Uh, not 100% sure, but that's what I've been doing with it. Uh, so yeah, it, it literally attaches in the middle there and it just sort of pivots or swivels down and out. And as you saw in the build, it just plugs into his bum alike. Uh, like so there we go well final thoughts then i really like this kit i think i've said it enough through the review but i think this is a great kit for a hg kit it's well worth the money i found this for 20 pounds in forbidden planet actually of all places and uh, i saw the box art and i just thought it looked so cool i had to grab it um, one critique maybe is it could have come with an extra pair of hands because the only pair you get are the sword holding hands so a closed fist might have been nicer or something else I don't know but when he's not holding the swords looks a little bit weird but it's fine other than that you know for the money for the price for the kit as for posability you know this thing is great uh, it's joints and everything i mean those feet still i think they're great they've uh, they really lend itself well to this model kit you know you can get some really good poses out of it um on this one i had to use a mat just to get him to stand still because i wasn't used to a figure stand and he was a bit slidey but you know put him on a figure stand better bing better boom as i once said before you can uh, yeah you can get some really good poses out of this thing 
Um, you have your usual, uh, you know, issues with uh, limbs popping off when you're trying to get the good pose that you want, you know, things falling off. But once you eventually get there, you know, you can get some really good poses out of this thing. So overall, I highly recommend it. If you're in the market just for a quick, nice build, you know, cheap build as well, um, pick this guy up. Uh, it doesn't move even without the panel lining. I thought he looked pretty cool. Anywho, thanks for watching, guys. If you made it this far, thank you very much. If you consider liking, that'd be amazing. I'd love to know how this video does because it's a model kit and I haven't really done many of these yet. Let's see if there's any interest in them. So thank you anyway, and I'll hopefully see you all again soon. Bye.